everyone. Uh, so welcome to uh, Unit 1 and the still image, uh, which uh, basically, in case you're still guessing, is photography. So we're going to start with the basics, which is images, and we're going to do photography. No, we are not going to do visual arts. We're specifically going to look at video, uh, photography because it is a different medium, um, specifically digital photography. So for this particular uh, unit, if you have uh, at home, some of you may or may not, uh, a actual digital SLR camera, which means single lens reflex camera like this, for example, uh, please feel free to use it. Um, experiment with it, play with it, lots and lots of fun. If you do not have a camera like this, and, and I'm not telling you to run out and buy a camera like this by any means, they're very pricey and very expensive, um, then you will be doing just fine by using something as simple as your phone. They actually have quite good uh, um, uh, cameras on them now, at ease, actually, which is, which is fantastic. So you'll do just fine with your phone, so you don't necessarily need this. Your phone is fine, but if you do have a more professional camera, feel free to use it. All right, so a little bit of the specifics in terms of the history. So what, it, what are we talking about here? Um, so photography itself is the art and science of creating durable images by using recording light or electromagnetic radiation, um, chemically or by light sensitive. Um, we use photography all the time, especially because we have phones now, so now it's mostly digital photography. When I was younger, specifically your age, I used to develop my own pictures using chemicals and actual film, and I could only take 24 photos at a time, so you really had to think about what you're taking pictures of. But now you can take as many pictures as you want. That's the great thing about digital photography. You can do so much more with it. So that's good. So a little bit of the history. So the word photography itself comes from the Greek roots photos. Um, gene of phos of light and graphy means uh, drawing. So basically it means light drawing. Makes sense. Um, it uh, came about using several different techniques. Uh, the camera obscura where uh, images date back all the way to ancient China. So it, it, it has been around for a very, very long time as a way of people who are maybe unable to draw in order to capture images that they, they can't necessarily render themselves. Um, it was invented in the early decades of the 19th century. Um, they would use cameras to capture more detailed information than a painting could be. Um, the view from the window La Grasse, which is pictured below, is the oldest surviving camera photograph that we have. It's not great, but it's the oldest one we have that we know back um, that we, they did have them. They just weren't very durable and, and didn't stay around. So in terms of types of media photography, and, and when we look at photography, there are some different types we can look at. Um, some of my favorite is surrealist uh, photography. I love surrealism. Uh, it's usually like a juxtaposition of non sequiturs, um, very contradictory or dreamlike photographs, illogical scenes that that don't make sense that are clearly staged photographs. Like they're done in a, such a way um, that it creates interesting contrasts between uh, the subject matter in the photo. And I love surrealist photographs. So I've got a couple examples here. A uh, ballerina with dolphins, for example, is a very surrealist type of photograph. Um, by Robert Janus. Uh, this is a beautiful one in terms of this, the purple, the contrast of the purples is phenomenal and this kind of dreamlike quality again that we talk about when you see um, surrealist photographs. Uh, conceptual photography um, are usually used to illustrate an idea, um, to represent an idea of sorts. Uh, it's preconceived um, and uh, it's kind of a cohesive image if you get it. It's most often seen in advertising is, is when you see conceptual photography specifically. Um, so for example, smoking, obviously in a single photograph you can kind of get what they're going for here. Uh, in turn, again, advertising as well, uh, non-uniformity, same. Same sort of thing here. This could fall under surrealism as well, but again, conceptual, conceptual ideas here. Lo-fi. Lo-fi is something I've been playing around with myself. I do love lo-fi, um, which is basically an aesthetic way of doing photos. It gives the impression of a low-quality photo. Like it's, um, 
it, we used to, we used to have these really bad photos, like Polaroid cameras, or cameras that had issues with light leaking in, um, that kind of ruins the photos, but now it's done as kind of an aesthetic quality to it. Sometimes you get overlapping images, um, and it's this idea of returning to film and these aspects of film without being actual film photos, which is kind of ironic, I guess, in a way, but I do love lo-fi photography. I love the aesthetic of it. So, for example, here you'd see something with, like, actual, uh, these would what we call film uh, notches in them, film, film notches. Uh, and then again, some more lo-fi. The colors are off. It looks like a light leak, that sort of stuff. But again, this is filter work. This is in actual photographs. Uh, another lo-fi, again, kind of pinhole camera as well. Lomography is another one which is fun. Um, it's uh, an analog camera movement. The idea behind lomography is don't think, just shoot. Like, you don't think about the picture, you just take the picture, take the picture, take the picture, take the picture, take the picture. And you're looking with things with high contrast, so um, a lot of unusual coloring, um, dark and light sort of sort of thing. Um, and it creates these images of unique character. Like, you don't, the idea behind it is you kind of don't set up, you shot, you're taking your picture as just randomly as, as possible, and then you kind of later manipulate it a bit in terms of the contrast of it to get that kind of Lomo feel that it has. Lomo is actually a filter you have on your phone, uh, your camera, you'll see it says Lomo. This is what it's referring to, Lomography, which has high contrast and color saturations with it. So that's why you might see that on your camera. Again, here's a Lomo photo here, and more Lomos, again, kind of like lo-fi, but not quite. Again, more lomography. Vernacular photography is probably what you are most familiar with and it's probably what you take the most of. Vernacular photography is you just taking pictures of your everyday life. That's all it is. Um, it's just every day. That's what the vernacular... To be in the vernacular means to be every day. And it's just what you do. So you taking selfies um, up on, you know, the Ferris wheel or you just taking a picture of your food. All vernacular photo photography because that's you in your everyday life taking photos so running down the street with your dog in the rain just married of course is is what they are so you got a better idea of photography now what do you need to do and I think you've guessed it by now yes you do have a photography project to complete two specifically I am going to give you four photography project options four you need to do two. Four options, you have to complete two of these options, okay? So four, complete two. <laughs> Don't do all four. If you're really excited about them and want to try all four, I am not going to argue against you trying all four or even trying three, but you only have to do two of four, okay? So I'm going to give you the four and you pick out what you want to do. So the first one is called joiners, which is a really, really fun one. Uh, so what this is, is you stand in one spot and you're going to take a picture slowly turning and you're going to take multiple pictures. So you're going to start and take one picture, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you're just going to turn in one spot and take pictures moving your camera up and down so you're getting different dimensions. So usually you would use this with a landscape of some sort. So you wanna take this with something to look at. You don't have to, I'm just recommending that you would do it. So what you then do is you're going to have all these multiple pictures. You are then going to assemble the pictures overlapping to create a singular image. Now, this is a little tricky. You can do this using Corel, or not Corel Draw. Oh my God, that's what I used when I was in school. It was a hundred years ago. Adobe, if you want to use Photoshop, but that is expensive and I don't want you to pay money for it. So what you can do is you can physically print off the pictures the same size and glue them together and then take a, a big picture with your own camera. Um, I actually have this on my portfolio if you want to see an example. Of, of how I did it myself. Um, so you have to use a minimum of 20 photographs for that. Or you can do it on, if you have access to another um, 
photo manipulation software for free. Pixlr, I do not believe will do it. It's a free software, but I don't believe it, it'll, it'll do that joining. But if you find one and you want to use it, you can, or you can physically do the joiner, like I talked about. Some examples, this is a joiner. You'll notice that each of these are an individual photograph and they connect together, right? So here's him, here's him, and this is all, this is what a joiner is. It's a multiple photographs used to make a single image. Here's another joiner. Multiple photographs used to make a singular image. They all connect together, okay? So that's one. Option the second. This is called same place, different time. Photography and taking of photographs, your photo can change drastically based on your time and your time of day. So what you're doing for this one is you're going to take four photos minimum. You can do more if you want, but four photos minimum. I would, I would suggest dawn during the day, sometimes like midday, dusk, just before the sun sets, and then nighttime, a nighttime shot. But you have to take it from the exact same position. So wherever you're taking your photo from, make sure you do not move. It has to be from the exact same position four different times of day. Sounds easy. <laughs> Sounds easy, but it's tricky getting it in the exact same position so it's the exact same photograph again. Difficult. So minimum of four images on that one. You can do more if you would like to do maybe five. You can do one um, dawn, midday, mid-afternoon, dusk, that sort of thing. Totally up to you, but must be four. That's option two. Uh, here are some different times of day, exact same, not quite the exact same spot, a little off in some of them. Here's another one that actually did six. Same view from their window, obviously, wherever they are across the city. Next one is a time slice. So this was kind of like a combination of the last one and the joiner. So same place, different time, as well as the joiner. What this is, is you're going to take the same photo uh, at different hours um, of the day and then move across the space. So basically you would take one photo from the same position every hour for however long, 10, 10 hours of that day, um, and you would go across uh, at different times of the day. Uh, and then you cut it into strips and you kind of put it together that way. I'll show you an example here. Here you are, right here. This is the same picture, but at different times of the day. So you'll notice it gets early and then progressively later as you move across the photo here. You can do, I, I did say 10, you can do like eight. I'd be okay with that. You, you Negotiable, totally negotiable. Here's one that's only five. It's not quite the same, but I do love this photo. It's a great picture. Uh, fourth option, and the final option you have is what we call series photography. So a series photography is a set of images that, re that are together in the same theme. So, so they, they mash together in the same sort of theme. Minimum of four to six shots in your series. They all have to be edited the same way. So that means if they're black and white, they all have to be black and white. Or if they're all color, they all have to be color. And they've all got to connect on the same thing. So you'll notice in this particular one, this is a cat. Here's his little nose, tip of his ear, his whisker, his eye. Same thing. This is all one thing. This is all a cat here. So that's what a series photographer is photography is. So these are all um, portraits. For example, all black and white portraits, all edited the same, all cohesive. Okay, again, one more time, you have to do two of the four projects. Okay, two of the four projects you have to do yourself. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? I hope it does make sense to everyone. <laughs> all right, if you have any questions, remember, um, I will be around. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. I want to see you guys. Um, uh, for those of you who are in my time zone in Ontario, uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then for those of you who are maybe overseas, I will be available in the evenings from 8 to 9. So your time, however that translates over 8 to 9 p.m. But I'm also available at that time too. You also have the access to the Hangouts channel as well. Okay. All right, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Don't forget, post your portfolio, 
with your reflection questions. Each one of these has three reflection questions. They're all the same. Post it to your portfolio. Put your reflection questions in as well. Okay? All right, guys, that's it for me. I can't wait to see what you come up with. See you in the next video.